In this short video, we will briefly demonstrate how to set up and operate the modal shop shaker kits. We will demonstrate using the K2075E075 shaker kit, but this video is also applicable to the K2060E060 and K2110E110 shaker kits. The primary components to a modal shop shaker kit is the shaker itself, the amplifier, the cable connecting the amplifier to the shaker, a cooling system when applicable, and a standard accessory kit that contains spare fuses, modal stingers, and other tools. You also need equipment to provide an excitation signal to the amplifier, which is not part of the standard kit. This may be in the form of a simple line power or battery powered signal generator, or a signal source on a larger data acquisition system, such as a vibration controller. First, we will need to provide power to the amplifier. The standard power configuration for the 2050 EO9 amplifier is 220 volt AC power. A three conductor power cord using the EU wiring convention of striped green yellow protective ground, blue neutral, and brown line voltage is provided and pre-installed on the amplifier. For reference, US wiring convention is green protective ground, white neutral, and black line voltage. Because the number of different 220 volt AC plug options and potential variations in building wiring, it is the end user's responsibility to provide and install the appropriate plug onto the cable and confirm the power is correct. Next. Find the cooling hose provided with the system to connect to the shaker and to the cooling vacuum. When connecting the hose to the cooling vacuum, make sure that it is connected to the correct port. Air should be sucked through the shaker rather than blown into the shaker. You'll notice an arrow on the blower indicating the airflow direction to connect to the correct port. Screw the hose adapter into this port and the muffler to the exhaust port of the vacuum. Then connect the hose and secure to the shaker and the cooling vacuum with hose clamps. Finally, power the cooling system by plugging it into the auxiliary power plug on the back of the amplifier. This will ensure that the cooling vacuum is running whenever the amplifier is powered up to mitigate the risk of damage by running the shaker without cooling. Connecting the pre-installed shaker cable to the shaker is the next step. Simply connect the cable to the shaker and tighten. You'll notice the cable consists of five different wires. The solid red and striped orange-blue wires are the armature drive signal. The striped white and black wire and the solid white wire are the interlock switch for the cooling sensor and the black wire is the ground wire. There is also a fuse in line on the red wire to prevent any damage to the shaker in the event of an overcurrent situation. The yellow fuse holder pulls apart to check or change the fuse. Before turning the amplifier on, connect the signal cable from the signal output of your data acquisition system, signal generator, or vibration controller to the amplifier via the BNC input marked AC on the back of the amplifier. Once connected, turn on the amplifier. There are a couple safety features built into the 2050E09 to be aware of that we'll cover next. The amplifier has a built-in safe start feature that requires the gain knob to be set in its home or zero gain position at startup before the signal can be gained up. This prevents a user from unknowingly turning on the system with an active signal into the amplifier and gained up, which could accidentally damage the test article or shaker. If the amplifier is started with the gain knob out of the home position, there will be a blinking light next to the trip indicator on the amplifier readout. To clear the trip error, Simply turn the gain knob back to the home position. There is a detent you will feel when the knob clicks into or out of the home position. From there, you will be able to slowly gain the signal back up. The 2075E, 2060E, and 2110E shakers are all equipped with a built-in pressure sensor to ensure the cooling vacuum is connected and cooling air through the shaker while the shaker is running. If the cooling is disconnected or loses power, the sensor will cause the amplifier to trip. Like the safe start feature, you will also see this indicated by a blinking light next to the trip indicator on the amplifier readout. If this happens, make sure the cooling is connected and powered on. If the cooling is not reconnected or restarted, the amplifier will continue to trip even after the gain knob is turned to the home position. The trip is reset the same as before by turning the gain knob back to the home position, at which point the gain can slowly be turned back up. We've just covered the basic setup for the K2060E060 K2075E075, and K2110E110 shaker kits. As always, if you have any further questions about the shaker system setup or questions regarding any other modal shop product, feel free to contact us. Thanks for watching!